Gems. They're an item that almost every player strives to get, and some of the most powerful crafting ingredients in the entire game. But have you ever wondered, what does every gem symbolize, and what is the purpose behind them? Well today, we're gonna dive deep into all 7 gems of Don't Starve, and try our best to figure out what each gem means, and their purpose. But before we do that, what are gems in the world of Don't Starve? Well, gems can be classified by 3 categories. Common, Uncommon, and Rare. Common gems include red gems, blue gems, and purple gems. Uncommon gems include yellow gems, orange gems, and green gems. And finally, the single rare gem is the iridescent gem. However, for the purpose of this video, we are going to organize them like this. Basic, which comprises of blue gems and red gems, since these gems will be simple to explain and understand. Complex, which comprises of purple, yellow, green, and orange gems. And finally, Ultra Complex, which is the almighty iridescent gem. Why? Well, you will understand that soon. But before we can start talking about individual gem types and their meanings, slash purposes, we must talk about what gems are as a whole and why they exist within the constant. Gems are actually relatively simple to understand. You see, magic exists within the constant. Gems act as focal points for this magic, with different colors doing different things. Simple, right? Well, this video wouldn't exist if that was the case. You see, there are some, let's say, issues with how gems work within the constant. Most seem obvious, but unfortunately many of the gems don't act so predictably, and may have more hidden meaning than originally thought. With the basics out of the way, let's talk about these sparkly focal lenses, starting with blue gems. Blue gems are by far the most basic and understandable gems within the constant. You acquire them from mining, like many of the other gems, but also from blue hounds and Klaus's ice deer. Blue gems can be used to make a plethora of cold items, such as ice staffs, chilled amulets, and salt boxes. So we know that they must be synonymous with cold energy. But curiously, they can also be used to make the magnifying glasses in the Hamlet DLC. Huh, that's kinda weird, right? What about a magnifying glass would signify cold? This is where things get a little interesting. You see, maybe blue gems don't just signify cold, perhaps blue gems signify both cold and clarity. Okay, let me explain. Blue gems are also essential to make something known as the moon dial, which has nothing to do with the cold at all. But you know what it does do? It provides clarity on the moon cycle. Why do I believe this? Well, blue gems seemingly have no connection to lunar energy, that job is taken by another gem, so the next closest thing would be clarity, explaining why blue gems would be required to make a magnifying glass. Pretty cool, right? Next up, red gems. Now, red gems are a little more interesting. In-game, they are obviously synonymous with heat. They are dropped by mining, like most gems, however, they are also dropped by firehounds and Klaus's fire deer. Red gems can be used to craft many fiery crafts, such as the fire staff, the night light, and even the life-giving amulet. Huh, that's kind of strange. Wait, they can also be used to make Wanda's ageless watch. What's going on here exactly? Well, thanks to our blue gem theory, this actually makes sense. You see, red is the opposite of blue. While blue gems represent cold and clarity, red gems symbolize the opposite, heat and uncertainty. Okay, hear me out. So we know that death is a certainty, even within the constant. However, red gems change that certainty by adding a new variable to it. For the life-giving amulet, that's literal revival, and for Wanda's ageless watch, that's her ability to revert the inevitable, if only temporarily. Makes sense now, right? So here we have two opposite gems. And if you thought these two were interesting, well, we only scratched the surface of the iceberg that is the gems, because things are only going to get more confusing from here on out. Next up, we have purple gems. Now, these gems are a little confusing. They seem to be synonymous with evil and darkness. We can see this because most shadow crafts require purple gems. So this should be simple. Purple gems are darkness, and their counterpart is yellow gems for light, right? No, not at all. Let me tell you why. So, sure, purple gems are used to craft many of the evil spooky crafts within the constant. But I do not think that is because they represent darkness. Rather, I think they represent time and activity. Why? Well, first, how could purple gems represent time? Well, they can be used with Wanda's backtrack watch to create a rift watch, 
amplifying its time dilation power by a significant amount. The next one is a bit of a stretch, but kind of makes sense. The Moonrock Idol, which allows characters to swap at a celestial portal. This could be seen as reverting time to character creation. As for the activity part, many things explain this perfectly. Purple gems are required to make the premier garden hat, which shows you the exact activity of a farm plot. Create the gem bell for Wolfgang, which is obviously activity. And even in the shipwreck DLC, it is used to make the magic conch, which is used to create wind. All of the other crafts are synonymous with activity as well, for obvious reasons. But what solidifies this theory is its opposite, the orange gem. Now, sure, most people assume that the orange gem is the opposite of the green gem, because the orange gem seemingly symbolizes lazy or sloth, and the green gem symbolizes productivity. But this might not be the case. Sure, the orange gem does symbolize inactivity, or laziness, it's literally in the name of the two crafts that it has. But I think it also represents space. Why? Well, when you use the Lazy Explorer, you are traveling through space to get to your destination. And when you use the Lazy Forager, you are causing other items to travel through space to enter your inventory. Plus, this would make the orange gem the opposite of the purple gem, which represents time and activity. Things are starting to get interesting, right? Well, there's one more pair that we have to cover. Let's start with green gems. First up, green gems can be obtained by mining, and more importantly, spasmatism, which is one of the twins. This doesn't seem important now, but trust me, it will make sense soon. These gems are used to create the construction amulet and the deconstruction staff. And if you are a normal person who assumes that the green gem is the opposite of the orange gem, which is lazy, then you would assume that the green gem stood for productivity. However, I think that its meaning could be far greater. Green gems represent life. And that has to do with one character in particular, Wormwood. You see, Wormwood's core is a green gem. Sure, the gem fell straight from Altar, but that still doesn't explain why it literally caused Wormwood to come to life. Because a gem that represents work wouldn't necessarily bring something consciousness. The best part about this theory, it also explains the construction amulet and the deconstruction staff. You see, life gives and it takes away. Construction and deconstruction. Okay, that makes some sense, right? I'm not totally crazy. But how exactly would yellow gems work as an opposite to green gems? That's simple. Yellow gems represent death. Wait, what? How does that make sense? Yellow gems should represent light because they are used to make the Starcaller staff and the Magiluminescence, both of which are very light based, no? Well, that is true. Not only is the yellow gem important for light-based crafts, it's also quoted by characters to be very bright. But what if all that is merely just symbolism? Seeing a light at the end of the tunnel is a phrase many people use to describe death and the process of dying. Many people assume that darkness is the symbol of death, but if that's so, then why is death described as everything going white, or lights at the end of the tunnel? Not only that, but a yellow gem is dropped by Retinizer, who is the other twin which helps symbolize that yellow gems work in tandem with, or opposite, to green gems. Life and death. Death and life. Interesting, huh? But we aren't done yet. So, blue and red gems represent cold and clarity, and heat and uncertainty, respectively. Purple and orange gems represent time and activity, and space and inactivity, respectively. And finally, green and yellow gems represent life and death, respectively. But there's one final gem that's a little more complex, and it's a gem that didn't make itself shown until Alter came around, and that is the Iridescent Gem. The Iridescent Gem is very obviously connected to Alter, who if you don't know is the sentient moon thing hovering over the constant. But why and how? Well, it's no secret that Iridescent Gems are a product of every single gem in the constant. We know this because of Wilson's special craft. One Iridescent Gem is equal to one red gem, one blue gem, one green gem, one purple gem, one yellow gem, and finally one orange gem. This means an iridescent gem should hold all the power of each gem, right? Wrong. Instead, it's far more sinister. Iridescent gems connect to Alter's power directly, and I think I can explain why. Magic exists within the constant because of Alter, and Alter can be linked to every one of the six magic gems within the constant. Alter brings cold in the form of lunar flames, and heat in the form of lunar springs. Alter brings time and activity in the form of progress, 
and space and inactivity by being away from the constant. And finally, Alter brings life in the form of the grotesque monsters they create, and death in the form of the destruction these beings can cause. Alter isn't just the lunar antagonist of the constant, Alter is the source of all magic within the constant. As a fun fact, all of this could be tied back to our moon as well. On the real moon, there is a light side which symbolizes heat, and a dark side which symbolizes cold. The moon has a spatial gravity well and, as such, affects time and activity. But it also resides within space and is relatively inactive due to the fact that it's just a really, really big rock. And finally, the moon symbolizes life in the fact that it has a major effect of life being on the Earth, and symbolizes death due to the fact that the moon has a hold over most life on Earth, and because something can't be responsible for life without also being responsible for death. I know this has nothing to do with Don't Starve, I just thought it was an interesting observation. So I decided to add it in for funsy. So now we know not only what each gem's true meaning is, we also know that all magic within the constant can funnel back to Alter, in the form of the iridescent gem, which holds pure lunar energy. Okay, it all makes sense, right? But wait, why is Wilson the only person capable of manipulating these magical vessels? Last time I checked, Wilson was a diehard scientist who wanted nothing to do with magic at all. In fact, this seems like something more up Maxwell's alley, since he is, you know, the magician. Well, let's talk about that. Well first, let's talk about Wilson's transmute gem skills. In Tier 1, Wilson can transmute red gems into blue gems and vice versa. This symbolizes turning heat into cold and cold into heat, which makes sense, and is an exchange that happens everywhere in real life very frequently exothermic reactions, and endothermic reactions. But what about the purple gem craft, which symbolizes using both heat and cold to make time and activity? Well, this kinda makes sense too. And to understand this, we must look at an important event within our own universe, the Big Bang. During this event, there was a period of intense cold, then a period of intense heat, before finally settling down into what we know as our universe, which symbolizes time and activity. So, yeah, that actually could make sense if you really think about it. Next up, we have to talk about Transmute 2. And here's where things get a little tricky. Here, Wilson can convert purple gems into orange gems and orange gems into yellow gems. The first craft symbolizes converting time and activity to space and inactivity. This could symbolize heat death. Well, what is heat death exactly? Sit back because it's science time. Heat death is a cosmological hypothesis that suggests that the universe will eventually reach a state of maximum entropy, where all energy is evenly distributed and no further work can be done between molecules. This means that the universe will become a cold, dark, and lifeless place, much like what the orange gem symbolizes, space and inactivity, or in this case, space and entropy. That's not all, however. Wilson can also convert space and inactivity into death. This actually isn't that far-fetched either. If orange gems symbolize space and inactivity, it's understandable how that would lead to, well, death. So, yeah, this one is actually kind of easy. And finally, Transmute 3. In this one, we are stuck with a philosophical issue. Wilson is capable of converting yellow gems into green gems, or death into life. And this can be explained with a little more real-life science. You see, for this we have to talk about carbon. This element is the reason you and I am alive. It's the reason you are watching this video, and it's the backbone for every single organism on this planet. But carbon isn't alive. In fact, it's very much dead. But carbon, being a dead thing, was capable of helping create life, or at least it's sustaining us now. So, is it really far-fetched for death to convert to life? No, and the best part is this makes sense. All of these elements, these reactions, they end in life, which must have some meaning. But that's not the only craft Wilson obtains here. Wilson is also able to use one of every gem to make an iridescent gem. Now, luckily for us, we already explained this a while ago. All magic within the constant points back to Alter, of who the iridescent gem symbolizes. But that still doesn't answer the question. Why Wilson? Well, for that, I have two theories. Theory number one is that Wilson has an innate ability to manipulate magic within the constant because it shows similarities to real-world science. I mean, think about it for a second. Science and magic are both incredibly similar, at least when it comes to biochemistry. 
With science, you have elements and molecules acting erratically and producing totally new things. With magic, you generally have the same things, just without the pesky laws of physics and thermodynamics getting in the way. So, more is possible. A good scientist could very easily become a good magician, as the important stuff is relatively the same. So maybe this is just Wilson doing his best to prove that he has the best understanding of elemental science compared to the others. Theory number two is that perhaps maybe this is Alter's way of showing pity on Wilson. Alter is very clearly not malicious. They didn't appear until Charlie started domineering over the constant. And perhaps maybe Alter bestowed the power of transmuting gems to Wilson as a way of rewarding him. As far as we know, Wilson was a lazy Shadow King. For however long he was Shadow King, literally nothing happened within the constant. This is probably Alter's dream position, not having to worry about a threat to their constant. I personally don't believe this one is true, since if so, then that doesn't explain why gem transmutation isn't a lunar path. But it's still certainly a plausible theory. Either way, gems are mysterious, and even a video like this doesn't do them justice, to be honest. But hopefully it did its job by making you think a little more into these magical little rocks. And hopefully in the future, we can uncover some more answers.